Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Mayan Curse by Crazy Like a Box. This is a one to six player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to play and is for ages 13 and up. In the game Mayan Curse, you are playing as an explorer, attempting to visit the ruins and eventually the Mayan temple. As you go across, these boulders start to unlock and slowly roll their way towards the entrance, blocking your path and maybe even forever trapping you inside. If you can get to the top of the temple, gather that camera and get back and score the most points by the end of the game, you'll be the winner. But be careful, like I said, if you get trapped, you lose it all and you're stuck in here for eternity. Let's talk about the setup for the game, how to play, and then of course, our review. My Curse has quite a bit of setup, but the main idea is you're going to be getting three transitionary boards. And then you'll get three separate boards for where you're going to be placing your tiles. Take each transitionary board and place them right before you place a, a board with the slabs, and as it's shown in the image here, as you can see, or in the rulebook. You're also going to take slabs and place them down uh, in their spaces, but make sure that the slabs that have a marking of one and two coins are placed in the first and second slots. The temple is placed at the very end, and then you're going to be placing all of the player's characters at the very start of the game board. Additionally, the brown tokens, you'll be randomly selecting one for each of the different slabs after the first two, and placing them going left to write on the furthest brown marker or indicated highlight on each of the slabs. So you should have five of these brown markers. Before we get to the next slab, there's gonna be the transition board, which is gonna have these boulders, which you will roll and then place on the spaces provided with the coin. The first boulder will have a single coin on it, the second will have two, and the third will have three. The next space is the next transitionary space. These are going to have uh, three and six of these gray markers, just the same as you did previously, left, right, left, right, the furthest brown space on the left, and then on the right, and on the left. And then finally, you'll have these ones here. These are the mega ones, left, right, left. And it's going to be three as well. When you get to the main temple board, make sure you put a camera on top and follow the instructions in the rule book to where you place these additional markers that allow you to gain points throughout the game. Finally, you'll take extra cameras for each player other than the first one and place them off to the side of the game board so that everybody can get just one camera. You won't need the rest of these, so these little temple um, totems here, and you're going to give the first player, the person who most recently visited a Mayan ruin or a ruin or maybe somewhere ancient, will start the game off. Each player will get a, a card, a backpack card, that has unique and a unique ability you can use in the game. And then start by giving each player three random tiles from the bag. Make sure that nobody else sees the tiles that you drew. And after that, you're ready to begin. Mayan Curse is a game that plays in rounds. Each round is going to have four phases. And in each phase, everybody is going to do something. Phase one involves each player drawing three random uh, tiles from the bag. These tiles are going to have a symbol and a color. After you have gained these tiles, then uh, each player is going to take turns, starting with the first player. Their, your turn is going to be represented with a number of things you're going to be doing. The first thing that you can do is you can slide three slabs. It can be the same slab three times or three dish, uh, different slabs. It's really up to you. But the main rule is you may only move a slab that you're next to or a slab that you're on or a slab that you're going to be going to. So if I wanted to go all the way across the game board from one transition to the next, I actually have to have enough uh, of these colors in my hand and the right colors to make it to the end. After I went ahead and slid these little uh, slabs here, I can then go ahead and move using my stones. Each of these stones represents a different color and a different like icon. And you're able to move from where you are through that stone and any stone that is the same that is adjacent. So if I have three of the same stone uh, that are adjacent to each other, I can go through all three of them using just one stone. Then I can go ahead and choose my next tile and move through those. And finally, my last one. If you can't use a tile, that's okay. You'll just discard it. And if you can't use any of them or you want to, you can go ahead and discard two to go ahead and turn it into a wild, which will allow you to move. Speaking of moving, each of the transitionary spaces do not require a uh, tile to go through. They're basically free. But in order to move through them to get to a new space, because you're never going to end on these spaces, you have to have a tile that's going to be connected to the next location. So if I'm on the end here, and I want to go to this board here, I'll have to discard a tile, maybe it's blue, to move to the blue space. And that's the same said for this area here as well. Speaking of playing, um, there are three different locations you can travel to on this temple board, and it functions just like this. 
but instead of sliding these slabs, you'll be rotating these dials here on the temple. And instead of moving left, right, up, or down, uh, in this one here, you're gonna be moving up and down and basically just rotating to get to the top to get to your camera. After you've gone ahead and slid your three tiles, then moved using your stones, you're gonna then discard all your sacred stones back to the game board. After you have done that, the next player is gonna get a chance to go using their stones until every player has taken their actions. Don't forget too on your turn, you can use this one-time ability here, your backpack that has four unique abilities that will let you do things like use one stone as a wild as opposed to two, or maybe make an extra slide this turn for a total of four instead of three. Then, after everyone has taken their actions, you're going to go ahead and check to see if boulders roll. The way boulders roll is based on the coins on top of the boulders. If there are no coins on top, the boulders are going to roll. How do the coins fall off? Whenever you gain one of these or one of these from the board here by walking onto them, so whenever you walk or move through a space with one of these kind of uh, totems, you are going to then take off one. So any single one that isn't brown will remove one coin. So eventually, after you find one, and then you find two more, and then three more, that will trigger all the boulders to roll. So if any boulders have none of these coins on them, which are just removed from the game once you gather the correct totems, then they're going to be able to activate. You'll see, based on how you rolled previously during setup, where they're going to roll. So if I had two boulders that had no coins on them, these guys are going to roll to the closest space from this boulder to the entrance um, on the first space of their color or type. So if it's yellow here, it would roll one, it would roll two, and then it would roll three. And any of the totems that rolls over, it will crush. And as you can see, the boulder as it rolls, it kind of tumbles, will change the new, to a new different type of, um, of icon, allowing you to move it to a new location. And remember, it's always going to go to the closest icon of its type rolling down the game board. So if one is very far away, it's obviously going to go to the next closest one, even if it's one or two spaces ahead of itself. Eventually, these boulders will roll into the exit. And the way that works is at the very end of the game board, if the icon that it is looking to go to is further than the closest transition space, the boulder will just simply roll into the exit gate. If all three boulders at any point in time roll into the exit gate spaces, all three of them, blocking path, blocking your travels, the game ends, and anybody that's still stuck in here loses the game. Everybody else will simply tally points. So after the boulders roll, then you're going to end the round. You'll pass this first player marker to the next player clockwise and simply once again restart, drawing three of these tiles here, having each player move these slabs, play tiles to move their character, gathering unique totems and whatnot, then checking to see after everybody takes their turn if the boulders have been released and if they roll, and finally, is everybody escaped or have the boulders blocked the path, in which case you'll tally up points and see who wins. That's how you play the game. It's actually quite simple. There's just a bit of setup and some nuances to the rules. Let's talk about what I think about it. So Mayan Curse is a light game, actually. It seems like it's a lot because it does actually have quite a bit of setup. You'll have to check the nuances of how to set the game up. And I gave a pretty good description, but always look at the rules for setup before ever taking a reviewer's advice. But being able to place these two starter tiles here and then having to place these ones randomly and then these all randomly, selecting how to place the stones and all that, Rolling, making sure that you roll these boulders and then placing the correct amount of these coins on them. They're probably not even called coins, but they look like coins. Um, one, two, and then three of them. And then, of course, how you set up that temple board, which is like, there's a certain way you do it, and it's in the diagram of the rule book. I wish it was more clearly explained, but I figured it out. Um, that's just going to be something you have to look up and check to see. Otherwise, though, the game plays quite simply. Drawing three, moving three, uh, or sliding three tiles, moving your character up to three lengths of spaces. Because remember, you're moving, if you play a red stone, and literally the entire path is all red, you'll move all the way across. That's how strong it is. Um, another cool thing too is to note, whenever you uh, get from one transitioner to the next, you'll always have to spend another. You can't go from red, and even if this was still red here, you couldn't go all the way through. You'd have to stop here and play another red one to move through any transition boards. Another cool rule, which I didn't mention in the, in the how to play, is if anybody ever gets to this transitionary board at the very end, just before the main temple, 
these boulders are simply going to lose all of their tokens and just start rolling. So the timer just starts and that's when the panic mode sets in. This is a game kind of like Escape the Temple, which has that like kind of rolling dice and all speedy and all crazy. Uh, it feels like that and the tension is really palpable, but there's no timed aspect to this game. This is all about nuanced choices as to how you move the board, how you can move the board to prevent your players or other opponents from moving correctly and allowing you to kind of get ahead, what tiles you get, so a little bit of luck as well, and noticing where the boulders are likely to be moved based on where they have kind of tumbled onto. And having a good idea of how the boulders function will determine how uh, soon you might have to leave. Now remember, if you get from one side of the board uh, to the other and back, you're very likely to win the game. And most people are not going to do that. My first game I played this, I didn't get anywhere near that. But what I did is I moved around and gathered these items here and left. And then the boulders came in and blocked the path and the players were stuck outside of the game or inside this temple. And thusly I ended up winning just on sheer not dying, which can actually come to your benefit. So timing boulders is very, very important in this game. Uh, I love sliding games. I love being able to use the tiles and kind of move my character around and like set up the best format I can. Uh, you can never really fully pre-program your turn if people are in front of you or are going to come from behind you, but you can kind of get an idea of what you want to do based on the tiles that you have. And you'll be holding them as people take their actions to kind of dictate what you want to do on your turn. The game is light and simple and straightforward with a ton of strategy. This is my favorite game of theirs, hands down. I really, really love Mayan Curse. I love the fact that it plays six players too. This game, the more, the merrier, because it's just more insane with more players playing this game. I, I probably wouldn't even want to play a two or a one player game. I did play a two, me and Callie played this game first just to figure out the rules and stuff before people came over. And it actually wasn't bad. It was pretty solid actually. So if you do want to play this game two players, it's not going to be a terrible game at all actually, because I really enjoyed it and I would play it again two players. But when I got that five and six player game going, it's it's just so much better. It's so much fun having people moving around and like the nervousness, people gathering things, these boulders are starting to roll. Somebody, one guy, Bill is trying to get to the very end and he gets that camera and then he realizes the boulders are over halfway across rolled and everybody else has moved the board around to the point where he's gonna have a really hard time getting out and so, like, it's like the dream to get that. And if you can do it, it feels super, super good. But it also feels super good to be the only player or one of the two players left that escape. Speaking of escaping, how points work. I didn't talk about that really. Each of these little totem guys are gonna have values under them. The ones that are smaller, the brown ones are worth less. There's like one to two, one to three points. Then these guys, the like uh, gray ones are worth, I think like three to four, two to four. And then these big boys here can go like four to six or whatever, I don't, is, there's a certain three to, three to five, I don't know. But these guys basically increase in value as you go through. And these cameras, while well, you can only get one per person by getting to the top of the temple, are worth 15. It's basically game over with this bad boy, if you can bring it out, and if not, if you're the only person who got it. Uh, then, of course, there's also this little card here. You can use this card as an action one time in the game. It's very, very powerful, but it's worth two points, which can and does make the difference up in scoring. However, if you need this to escape, it's a no-brainer. You need to use this, and the abilities are very powerful. Being able to rotate or like push more than an extra slab, uh, using a sacred stone as a wild as opposed to two. Thusly, you could use two as a wild and one as a wild, letting you get places you might not be able to make before. Before you slide, jump. Uh, before you slide, you can jump to any space on the, on the slab you're standing on, which is really good. And then your compass, before you slide, move to any adjacent space. These, you might not think, because it seems because they seem so light, are very, very important. Because Especially because as you move back down the game board, realize that the colors have all shifted. These boards have moved to the point where a lot of colors of the same color are matching, but as people are trying to use those colors to get across the game board as well, and using their paths to get across is super important. What am I missing? Oh, there, there's a river space on this game board, if you might have noticed. As you push these pieces across, you'll start to realize that there's a river in the middle. You may never push one of these slabs to the point where you see the river. So the farthest you can push it on the first area is gonna be when the slab hits the end. However, on this actually, this board here, you can push them off of the game board and you just obviously can't go through spaces that have no area to go left instead. 
You can push it all the way to the point where this is literally sliding way off of the table, um, as long as you don't push it to where the river is. So there's a certain amount of space that can be pushed with all of these guys here. And the reason why this side here has actual extra game board is because you never want these boulders to have to get stuck on the outside and not be able to move. Um, and there's certain rulings for that, but spe specifically that there's always gonna be a way in, this, in which these boulders are gonna get, get across. You can only kind of slow them down, but why would you if you're already over here? You want everybody over here to die. <laughs> the quality of the game. This is a prototype, so it's not done yet, but it's excellent. This is really, really, really good. I'm very excited to see the finished version of this game. Um, the components, the quality, um, each of the different symbols work really well. Like there's two that are kind of similar to me. I wish they were just a little different in, in color and type for the symbols, but all the rest of them are very, very similar. The blue ones are the ones that are like super kind of close, like light blue and then less light blue. And they're both kind of like backpack looking. I wish they were a little different, but otherwise, Really, really cool. It feels like you're going through a mine. This, this game is packed with theme. It's very light, getting in, taking a picture of the temple and getting out, but what's there is perfect. It does exactly what it needs to do. Um, and oh, there's one other thing. Last thing before I, I finish here. This is kind of, an, there's, there's, there's tiles in here that are double tiles. You can use the left or right hand side uh, for either type of, of, of a icon. And that's really, really cool. I like that idea. Okay, I'm done gushing about Mind Curse. This is a really solid game though. If you like a game that's a party game, you want something that you don't mind, has a bit of setup and a bit of randomness. There's a bit of luck in this game, obviously, based on how it's made, but it's a ton of fun. And at the end of the game, whether you win or lose, you're still gonna have a good time. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game, Mayan Curse by Crazy Like a Box. I'd be remiss, remiss to not do this, so I'm going to give this game my seal of approval. I really, really enjoyed this game. I think it's probably the third one I've given out this year, so it's a huge honor. You're welcome. I'm just kidding, but yeah, I really like this game. Uh, I'll go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button if you feel like we've earned it, and of course, the notification bell. Check the link in the description where you can pick up this game currently on Kickstarter, or maybe if you're watching into the future, it will be a pre-order. And then if it's really in the future, maybe check Amazon. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to avoiding the Mayan curse with you next time. <laughs>